Thank you. I'm very happy to be here today with Premier Li. This is my second official visit to China. I was here <clears throat> last year and had the pleasure of welcoming Premier Li to Ottawa shortly after that. It was during my last visit to Beijing that we committed to holding annual leaders' meetings like this one. We made that commitment because we know that the best way to build a stronger, more comprehensive relationship between Canada and China is through regular and frank dialogue. And that's exactly what took place today. Je suis heureux que nous poursuivrons nos discussions exploratoires vers un accord commercial global entre le Canada et la Chine. Nous croyons que, lorsque tout est fait correctement, un accord commercial est avantageux pour chacun des pays en cause. Il favorise la création d'emplois, le renforcement de la classe moyenne et la croissance de nos économies. I'm pleased that we'll continue our exploratory discussions toward a comprehensive trade agreement between Canada and China. We believe that, done properly, a trade agreement will benefit both countries, creating jobs, strengthening the middle class, and growing our economies. It's an opportunity that makes sense for Canadian businesses. Canada is, and always has been, a trading nation. But the landscape of trade is shifting, and we need to adjust to it. Already one of the top destinations for Canadian exports, China will soon be the largest market in the world. It's home to one billion potential customers for the high-quality goods and services that Canadians deliver every day. We're continuing work towards a comprehensive trade agreement with China because greater market access for Canadian businesses means stronger business growth and more jobs for the middle class and all those working hard to join it. With China, as with all our trading partners, we're committed to pursuing progressive trade that benefits everyone. Trade that puts people first and reflects Canadian values, especially when it comes to labour, the environment and gender. We also made important progress on other issues of mutual interest. I'm happy to share that earlier today, Premier Lee and I agreed to a joint statement on climate change and clean growth. This statement affirms our shared commitment to mitigating the global threat of climate change and lays out a plan for closer collaboration, including regular ministerial level meetings on climate change, clean energy and the environment. On the agricultural front, I'm pleased to announce that Canadian beef and pork will have greater access to the Chinese market, and we continue to work together to develop a science-based solution on canola beyond 2020. This is all good news for Canadian farmers. All these things, an opportunity to expand trade, stronger action on climate change, greater market access for Canadian products, are all good news for Canada's middle class, for China's middle class, and for the communities they call home. Of course, the relationship between our two countries goes well beyond economic agreements. There is a deep and enduring connection between the people of Canada and the people of China. Next year, our two countries will celebrate the Canada-China Year of Tourism, another opportunity for Canadian and Chinese citizens to travel meet new people, and form lasting friendships. That connection will grow even stronger as we work together to encourage more educational exchanges and explore greater cultural cooperation. As I have said before, it is in the best interests of all Canadians to ensure that we have a strong, stable relationship with China, one founded in mutual respect and regular engagement. It is through honest, positive dialogue and sincere collaboration that we will create even greater opportunities for everyone, for Canadians, for Chinese citizens, for those in the middle class, and for all those working hard to join the middle class. Thank you. Merci. Xie xie.